Welcome. How's everybody doing today? All right, so what I want to do is I want to show you now how to graph our trigonometric functions. So the first one we're going to start with is the sine of x. And to graph the sine of x, the first thing we need to understand is exactly, remember, what does the sine of x represent? And when we're dealing with a unit circle, we talked about the sine of x represented the y-coordinate of our point of an angle on that unit circle. So if I had an angle, or you know, an angle, let's see, my angle is 0, the coordinate point there is 1, 0. Remember, the sine function of that angle represented the y-coordinate. So for this angle, which is pi over 2, this point was 0, 1. So the sine of pi over 2 was equal to the y-coordinate, which was 1. For my angle of pi, I'll write that inside. For my angle of pi, my, my coordinate was at negative 1, 0. So sine represented 0. And at 3 pi over 2, my, the sine of my coordinate equaled negative 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that information to graph a sine curve. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of, if you kind of think about this as, now let's draw this a little bit lower. What I want you to do is try to think about when you always learn at graphing, one of the first things I always make sure I tell my students is you can always, always create an xy table. And instead of talking xy table, since we're talking about functions, we're going to talk about an f of x, um, f of x in your function table. So if I wanted to figure out, if I want to take, you know, what is um, my x, or I'm sorry, f of x is sine of x. So, so we have an x and then our function f of x. So when x equals 0, that means my angle is 0, right? I have not moved anywhere. When my angle is 0, what is the, my sine? So when I plug 0 in for sine, I'm going to get the y-coordinate, which is 0. So for my function, f of x equals sine of x, at the angle 0, my sine function is equal to 0. But let's look at the next one. What about at pi over 2? So when I put in my function pi over 2, the sine of my angle pi over 2, which would be the angle from there to there, is equal to 1. So therefore, I'm going to go up to 1 on my graph. Now let's look at the next point, which would be pi. So now I'm going to continue my graph over to pi. The value of my function sine at pi is equal to 0. So now we're actually going to go back down to 0. Then we continue it over to 3 pi over 2. So at 3 pi over 2, my y value is at negative 1. So I go down to negative 1. So you guys can see that right there. Then if I continue one more all the way back up to complete one revolution, my sine value for 2 pi is again back up at 0. So what I can do is now I'm going to connect all of these points to create my sine curve. And one thing you need to know that, remember, angles can keep on going around and around the unit circle. So what's going to happen is this graph is going to keep repeating itself in this positive direction. But remember, angles aren't just restricted on the unit circle to going in the positive direction. We can also work with angles going in the negative direction. So if I was going to talk about negative pi over 2, so at negative pi over 2, my angle goes out down back to negative 1. Then at negative pi, I'm going to come back up to 0. At negative 3 pi over 2, so at pi, negative pi, it's at 0. And then at negative 3 pi over 2, I'm back up here at 1. Then at negative 2 pi, I'm back over at 0. So what you can see, again, by graphing is this function that's yeah, somewhere like that. You can see this function is just repeating itself also in the negative direction. So the sine function is cyclical. It's going to repeat the exact same pattern going infinitely to the left and infinitely to the right. So hopefully you guys can see how by just plugging in points into my or plugging in my angles into my function, I'm going to get back out 
their y value. And by graphing them, I create this curve. So please make sure you ask any questions, comment down below. Thanks again for watching.